Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number six of Camera Position, a podcast about the creative side of photography. Before we get into the photograph that I'd like to talk a few minutes about today, I first wanted to thank the number of people who have written in and let me know what you're thinking and, and how you like the uh, podcast so far uh, and what you'd like to see. I'd certainly like to hear from more people, find out what people are thinking about in terms of their interest in photography. I have had a few people ask uh, me to elaborate a little bit about me and about my background. Um, as uh, some of you may have discovered, if you visited the Camera Position website, cameraposition.com, you've discovered that uh, a couple of aspects about me as a photographer. One is that I am a professor of photography at a community college in the suburban Chicago, Illinois area. And uh, College of DuPage is where I've taught since 1984 and have uh, taught a wide variety of classes there. And in fact, some of you may have heard my podcast about the history of photography. I've been podcasting my history of photography class for the last uh, oh six months or so four months I guess uh, and um, some of you may have heard that podcast and if you haven't you're interested in the medium's history in a sort of comprehensive fashion there's somewhat longer podcasts than camera position uh, camera position weighing in somewhere in the five to seven or eight minute range but uh, the history of photography podcast weighing in substantially longer, often uh, as long as a couple of hours. Um, you can find information about that if you go to uh, iTunes and just type in my last name or history of photography. So that's Curto, C-U-R-T-O, or history of photography. You'll find information about that podcast. Um, another aspect of my photographic life in addition to teaching photography for over 22 years has been uh, the fact that I've been a photographer for even longer than that uh, both in a, a commercial or a professional fashion uh, early on prior to my getting a full-time teaching job I was uh, making all kinds of photographs from journalistic images to editorial kinds of images architectural interiors exteriors a wide variety of kinds of things but since I've been teaching full-time, I've really spent more of my time making photographs that interest me. And uh, one of the, the other things that, that are, that's great about this is that I not only get to make photographs that interest me, but I get to look at and talk about photographs that interest me, uh, certainly photographs that my students are making, as well as photographs that I get to show them. And that brings me to uh, today's Camera Position podcast and uh, the photograph I'd like to talk about, and that is a photograph by Eugene Atje, the great French photographer from shortly after the turn of the century. Uh, 1921 is when this photograph was made, and it's called Saint Cloud. And Atje had some peculiar interests in photography. Um, you can probably read a lot more about his background in a variety of places uh, than, than I can give you here, but one of the most intriguing aspects of Ot Jay's life is that he was not initially in his life a photographer. Uh, he came to photography as an actor, actually, uh, and uh, was just interested in trying to preserve a Paris where he lived that was beginning to disappear and change because modern technology and new buildings and so forth were changing the Paris of his youth, and he took up photography as a way of preserving that. So he's a guy who's not particularly trained in photography and yet seems to have had in this uh, large body of work that he produced, a body of work that, by the way, was not really even discovered uh, in terms of its entirety uh, in t until uh, the 1970s. But um, his, his real propensity and his real skill, I think, was in placing the camera and certainly that's one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about him here in camera position is his ability to put the camera in an interesting place. Um, one of the things that Atjay always seemed to know how to do is he need, seemed to know how to figure out where to stand. And this photograph of St. Cloud is, is no exception uh, because when you look at this picture you realize how different it would be if Atjay had stood 
even just a few inches to the left or a few inches to the right of where it is that he's standing, or if he had raised or lowered his camera ever so slightly. Let's take a, take a look at a couple of those areas that uh, I think are particularly interesting here. One is, if we look at that left to right positioning, we can see things like the way in which he has laid out a wide variety of triangles in this photograph. Not only the obvious triangles of the triangular shape of these bushes uh, that are uh, have been obviously molded into this particular shape, but also the triangles created by the intersection, especially of the intersection of the two uh, bushes that are just about dead center in the photograph, and the way those bushes' positions uh, end up creating a triangle of white out of the staircase that is beyond them. Uh, and then we begin, when we see that camera position choice and how that has affected the, the composition and the way in which we see that triangle, we begin to recognize that even just a few inches left or right would change things substantially, not only with that white triangle that's been created, but also the intersection of the bush on the left and the other uh, bush that is just very, very close behind it uh, or, uh, in terms of the way we perceive it. Uh, also, if we look over to the right side of the photograph, the way in which that uh, other uh, sort of not quite exactly perfectly triangular shaped uh, shrub over on the right side of the photograph, the way that um, intersects or, or makes an interesting shape out of the sky and the way in which we perceive the bushes or the trees rather in the way far background of the image. So that's just all the stuff that's happening in the left to right camera position of, of Ajay's choice in this particular photograph. But now let's look at up to down camera position and how his choice of elevation of the camera changes things. Take a look at this little space here that is really kind of almost balanced on the top of the, the center of these uh, three conical shaped uh, bushes or shrubs and how if Ache had stood even just an inch or two higher or lower, that intersection of that uh, shape of white sky would not have appeared in that exact spot. Now, I'm not certain that when a photographer makes those kinds of choices that they're making them consciously. I, I suppose from my own perspective and my own photographs, sometimes I make them consciously and Sometimes I make them subconsciously or unconsciously, as the case may be. Um, but I really think that that is what photography ends up becoming in many ways for many photographers. That way that we end up subliminating uh, our visual sense and that whole sense of how we are visual. Uh, and I think photographers uh, and, and other creative visual artists tend to look at their world in a different way. And sometimes we respond and say, ooh, this would be interesting if I moved the camera into this position, or it wouldn't that make a beautiful photograph? But oftentimes it is what Ansel Adams used to call imaginary photographs or photographs of the mind that we make. When we see something that we find intriguing, uh, we tend to look at it and position ourselves in a certain way. Uh, people who knew Henri Cartier-Bresson, the great photographer who coined the phrase decisive moment to describe when he was making, uh, when he would expose a, a photograph, the decisive moment where uh, the position of the subjects and the, uh, the, the scenery around the subjects all sort of fell into place. People who knew Bresson talked about the fact that what he would uh, what he would do is continuously move his head when he was in conversation with you because he would be wanting to create a better composition with the background. So here in this uh, marvelous uh, Eugene Ache photograph, uh, I think I see some really consciously careful choices about how he's placing his camera, where he's putting his camera, and I think that uh, we photographers can learn a lot from. Eugene Ache's incredible ability to figure out where to stand, what the best place to stand to make a photograph was. Thanks for joining me in uh, this episode number six of Camera Position. Again, I'd really love to hear from more of you. You can reach me at jeff 
at jeffcurto.com or jeff at cameraposition.com or visit me on the web at jeffcurto.com or at cameraposition.com and uh, send me a note. Let me know what you think of what we're doing here in the Camera Position podcast and uh, let me know what you might like to hear more of or less of and and we'll uh, try to make that happen over the coming weeks. Uh, I'm uh, excited to be going down to the PMA, Photo Marketing Association, uh, meeting this weekend. Uh, big trade show and the Photo Imaging Education Association uh, conference for uh, college and high school photo educators. So should be an interesting uh, few days, and uh, perhaps I'll give a report in an upcoming camera position. Thanks, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.